Welcome to the Cambridge Learning Center, and thanks for joining us for the first installment of our video newsletter on the MCAT Verbal. I'm Leonardo Radamile. In this segment of our newsletter, what we'd like to do is focus on three objectives. The first objective is to make sure that you know what the MCAT Verbal is testing and how the test itself works. The second objective is making sure that you know exactly what you need to study in order to excel on the exam. And by excelling, we mean getting a score of 10 or better. And third, we'd like to direct you to some free materials so that in the event that you study on your own or take a course, you'll have what you need to really point you in the right direction. Now, let's first begin by taking a look at what the MCAT Verbal tests. The MCAT Verbal measures your ability to read and analyze texts. Now, what does that entail? Well, the first thing that it entails is being able to pick out the key ideas. What's the underlying structure of the essay as opposed to just intervening information? What are the key ideas in the essay and how do you pick them out? The second thing that you need to do is to take those key points, those key sentences, and be able to analyze them internally. To look at a key sentence and actually get the complete meaning out of it. And the third point is to see the relationship of ideas, how the ideas relate to each other, because the whole is always greater than the sum of its parts. And finally, it's the ability to analyze questions and answers with clarity and certainty. The ability to see what the strategy of a question is and to be able to carefully analyze the difference between the answers. Now, there are no test-taking techniques or shortcuts in learning how to do this. Really, it's all based on fundamentals. The fundamentals on, of understanding language and understanding how language works in essays and the structure of essays. Now, what does that take and what do you have to learn? Well, the first thing that you have to learn is rhetoric. What is rhetoric? Rhetoric is understanding the gross morphology of essays, how they are structured. And just as you've learned in physiology, the gross morphology of the human body, essays have a predictable structure as well. For example, you normally have a thesis paragraph, and it's in the thesis paragraph that you find the argument that the writer is going to make. And then within paragraphs themselves, paragraphs normally have topic sentences where the key idea of the paragraph is introduced. And then conclusion sentences where you see what the significance of that entire paragraph is. And in between the topic and conclusion sentence, you normally have other sentences that contain key ideas. And you can identify them by knowing certain rhetorical cues. And what are rhetorical cues? Well, they are punctuation marks or key words, like conclusion words or contrast words, where the author tells us to pay particular attention to a particular idea. So, the first skill that you have to master is rhetoric and knowing how to pick out those significant sentences that contain the underlying meaning of the essay. The second thing that you have to do is master grammar. Now, what is grammar? Grammar is the study of the nature of individual words and how they work in sentences, how they relate to each other, and what the relationship of single words and groups of words are. Now, this is particularly important in analyzing those key sentences because you and I have all seen texts where we'll come across a sentence that might be six or seven or even eight lines long, that'll be 50 or 60 words. And the question then becomes, how do we figure out what this guy is telling us? Well, grammar allows you to take that 50 or 60 words and reduce it down to a three or four word concept that really gives you clarity as to what the key idea is. So once you're able to pick out the key sentences and then extract from them the key ideas using rhetoric and grammar, the next thing is the development of reflective intelligence. And reflective intelligence is the ability to not only see the relationship between sentences, but also to think and reflect and see, well, now that I see the relationship, what does this imply? What can I infer from this? What does this suggest? You know, it's very much like a number series in math where you see two, four, six, eight blank, and you know to fill in 10 in the blank. 
Well, once you master this domain of learning and once you master this way of thinking, you'll be able to see what an argument forces you to conclude even though it's not contained in the text. Now, those are the things that you need to really master the test. And, you know, in some ways it seems a little bit unfair. I mean, after all, you've been studying science for four years, and all of a sudden you're expected to perform at a high level in the verbal part of the test. You know, it's, it's almost like having mastered tennis over a four-year period, and then coming to the big tournament, and then all of a sudden you're put on a golf course with a set of golf clubs. It, you're simply not prepared. But just as you learn science, the whole domain of verbal analysis has its own rules, its own way of thinking, and its own fundamentals. A fourth element is mastering questions and answers. Questions always have a specific strategy, a specific type that leads you to understand what the question is really asking for. And it's here that grammar is really king. And what you'll see in questions and answers is that a single word, knowing how an adjective works or an adverb works, how it changes the meaning of the sentence, can make all of the difference in the world. Now, once you've mastered the skills that it takes to do verbal analysis, grammar, rhetoric, reflective intelligence, and knowing the strategy of questions and answers, another thing that will really improve your performance is mastering the cognitive exercises that will increase your brain functionality. Now, for those of you who have studied neuroscience or neurobiology, you realize that in the last 10 years, there have been enormous strides in the research that's been done in cognitive psychology and neuroscience. We really do know now how brain functionality works with regard to language acquisition and with regard to critical reading and the anal analyzing of texts. We know how to raise dopamine and serotonin levels and we know how to integrate brain function and to engage a larger part of the, of the frontal cortex so that you bring more to the text. And what we've done in conjunction with uh, the work that's been done at other universities is to take the research and construct a series of exercises which over a period of time will not only raise dopamine and serotonin levels immediately, but raise your base level of dopamine and serotonin and engage a larger part of your frontal cortex so that when you are in a test-taking condition, you are not only calmer and more focused, but bringing more of your ability to focus on the tests. And we notice that when students improve their cognition in the verbal section, their scores in the science sections go up as well, usually by at least a point. Now that you have an overview of the key elements of the MCAT verbal, in subsequent newsletters we'll be going into much greater detail. We'll be doing one on rhetoric, one on grammar, one on reflective intelligence, another on question and answer strategy, and finally one on the neuroscience exercises that greatly enhance verbal performance. So thanks for stopping by the Cambridge Learning Center and we invite you to sign up for our newsletter. Just go to our webpage at www.cambridgelearningcenter.org and click on the link for a newsletter subscription. When you do so, we'll be happy to send you some free materials that will really get you pointed in the right direction in preparing for the MCAT verbal. So again, for the Cambridge Learning Center, I'm Leonardo Radamile. Thanks for stopping by.